Today we're going to show you how to make some 3D printed solderless LED panels. Uh, for those that want them small, and uh, for those that like them large. Printable Science presents a 3D printed solderless LED panel. Printable Science is made possible by the generosity of our Patreon supporters and viewers like you. Now lead strips are a versatile solution to any illumination project. You can run them up walls and stick them under shelving. And if you want to turn corners, you can cut them. And if you want to create an LED panel, you can assemble a whole bunch of smaller strips in rows. The only drawback to cutting them is that you have to reattach them some way. And currently there's only a couple of options for that. If you want to take a 90 degree turn, you can get some L-shaped connectors like this, but at around a dollar a connector, you can end up spending a lot of money pretty quickly. And if you want to make a lead panel, you need to do a bunch of 180 degree turns, and in the pre-packaged connector department, you're looking at this kind of connector, which brings with it a hunk of wire that gets unsightly and difficult to manage pretty quickly. The more economical, flexible approach is to mount your strips and then solder them with uh, small pieces of wire to make the connection and, and although it's inexpensive it's fiddly and requires a fair amount of soldering skill to make good connections without damaging the components and if it's not the way you want then it's just as difficult to uh, detach it and reassemble it in a better configuration that meets your needs. So what we came up with is a 3D printed panel that can be as large as your print bed and only requires three non-printed parts. You'll need uh, your, L your LED strip, of course, and uh, you'll need some uh, three millimeter copper tape. You can get that uh, from uh, eBay or Amazon or that kind of thing, and it's, uh, it's fairly cheap. Uh, and uh, you'll need a 2.5 millimeter printed circuit board power connector uh, like this. And uh, you can get those off of uh, eBay or Amazon or whatever you are, and they're, and they're fairly inexpensive as well. And uh, add to that some basic tools like uh, a razor blade. This kind is the... Uh, this kind is the razor blade of choice with the sharp edge, don't touch, and the blunt edge uh, with folded over a channel there. And you'll see why that's so uh, effective and appropriate for, for this project. Uh, a ruler, I uh, particularly recommend uh, one of the, uh, those uh, short uh, metal ones. Now I can't find mine, but oh, here we are. Uh, Particularly with that short edge, you'll find that's really helpful for forming an edge that uh, was required. And uh, some uh, some uh, scissors and uh, some tweezers. Uh, you want to make sure you get uh, tweezers uh, that have a, a a flat edge. And uh, have I got those? Yeah. Well, we're really we're really doing well here. See, even though it's angled, there is at least uh, a uh, flat edge there that you can work with and uh, some glue uh, we recommend uh, epoxy uh, but uh, even a uh, glue gun would uh, work uh, I suspect so how does this all work well we have a, a channel uh, for uh, the LED strip to sit in and it's chamfered at the top edge so that it's slightly narrower at the top than the width of the strip is and that just allows us to slide in a cut LED strip maybe we can show that uh, allows us to slide in a uh, cut LED strip uh, for the LED to sit in and then the, the chamfer uh, prevents uh, it from falling out or even wiggling around so uh, 
the important thing to remember is leave the uh, leave the adhesive uh, protector uh, paper in place. If you remove that before you try and uh, put these in, it'll just stick and the thing won't work at all. Uh, so don't remove the uh, the protective strip. So how does this all work? Well, we have a channel for uh, the lead strip to sit in and uh, it's chamfered at the top edge that is slightly narrower than the width of the strip. That allows us to slide uh, cut uh, lead strips into uh, the channel with the adhesive protector still in place. In fact, don't remove the protective uh, paper because if you do, uh, this, uh, this ain't going to work at all. Uh, at each end of uh, these uh, channel pairs, there's a tab that's used to, to make the connection from uh, one strip to the next. And you, you'll notice that between the body of the panel and the flap, there's a single layer hinge. Now, while PLA and PETG and ABS are not considered flexible filaments, our experience is that you can make an effective hinge by laying down a single layer. You know, you won't get lots of bends out of it before it falls apart, but it'll be more than suitable for something like a panel, which once constructed, uh, won't have uh, the need of a hinge again and you'll probably only be using it as a hinge for at most uh, three or four times. Now when we're inserting strips we need to make sure that uh, we maintain uh, the correct polarity. In practice this requires the edge of each strip to match uh, the polarity of its neighbors so that the positive side of each strip matches the uh, uh, positive side of the strip beside it and the negative side uh, matches the negative side. So here we can see uh, on this one, uh, can we see that? Yeah, see that says positive and then, or sorry, that's negative and negative and then positive and then positive and then negative and then negative. Is that right? Did I see that right? No, it was the wrong way around. Well, you see what I mean with them matching up on the sides. To make the electrical connection for these, uh, for these strips, we need to connect each of the closest pads to each other and each of the farthest pads to each other. And that's, that's where the foil, the copper foil tape comes into play. We cut a length of tape that will allow us to wrap it around the entire flap, which is about 50 millimeters in uh, length. And uh, at least for the panels that we're constructing here. And we remove the protective paper on the copper foil to expose the adhesive and then applying it so that it just covers one of the outside flaps, outside pads of the flap. And we carefully wrap it around the back side of the flap bringing it around to the front side of the flap and hanging up with just a little bit of excess over the pad where we first adhered the foil. We then take our razor blade and cut back the end at the point where it has just covered the inner pad and we can then use the tweezers to remove the excess. We then take the razor blade and make two cuts between the other pair of pads on the other side of the flap and then use the tweezers to remove the bit of foil we just cut free. Once that's done, you can see uh, we now have a connection to the outside pads that goes around the back of the flap and a connection between the two inside pads. And we use the back of the razor blade, the non-sharp side, to burnish the copper foil to improve its adhesion. Once we've added copper foil to all our flaps, we can cut our lead strips and insert them into the panel. Now you may have to exercise some caution about your choice of lead strips to use for this project. First of all, all the panels we've provided here are for 10 millimeter wide two conductor strips. Also the thickness of the mounting tape, including the adhesive protective paper is 0.4 millimeters. You also need to ensure that the lead strip you want to use do not, does not reduce the contact area of uh, the conductor to a uh, to a small uh, pin 
uh, size. So I'll show you what I mean by that. You may be able to see that on there. Let's just, can we focus in on that? Well, not particularly well, but you'll see that that's been uh, silk screened or something so that uh, there's only that it reduces the amount of uh, copper that's actually being uh, exposed. The configuration of those kind of pads uh, in the panels we provide here will not work with those strips. Finally, you want to make sure that the thickness of the carrier strip, including the adhesive protective papers, fairly close to 0.4 millimeters. Thinner than that, then the strip will flop around too much, and thicker than that, you'll find feeding the strips quite difficult to do. Of course, if you're one of our patrons, you can order up a lead panel in just about any practical configuration you want. You can specify different strip widths, strip spacing, carrier strip thickness, and pad profiles. Before you sit down to make a large panel, we suggest you build a small two or three strip panel with your intended lead strip to make sure the assembly will work for you. So at this point, we insert our first lead strip into the panel. The way the printed circuit board power connectors are constructed, we're required to place it in a specific orientation. Now there's two places a power connector can go. The usual place to put it is uh, on the 3D printed panel where there's a small rectangular hole parallel to the front edge of the panel. You can see the other one doesn't have that. That's uh, there to provide uh, mounting for the third pin of the connector, a uh, pin which uh, we don't actually uh, use in, in this project. Now, if you want to daisy chain your lead panels, you can attach uh, a second power connector at the end of the panel. But if you go that route, you'll need to fold up the third pin, which uh, is on the, the side here. Uh, you'll need to fold it up out of the way uh, so that it doesn't interfere with uh, the connection. Now you should start off by inserting the strip that mates with the power connector as it's handled a little bit differently than the other strips. And after you've slid the strip into place, you want to back off a bit so that the copper connectors, uh, the pads, uh, the copper connector pads on the strip are hanging over the edge. Then use the tweezers to make a sharp 90 degree bend at the end so that there's just about one millimeter of lip pointing down at the end. Now push the strip back into place taking care to let that lip line up with the rectangular slit. You can then push that lip into the slit which will position the contact pads of the strip to make contact with the pins of the power connector. The correct polarity for each, uh, uh, the correct polarity for each uh, side of the lead strip is engraved in each channel so you shouldn't have trouble keeping your polarity straight. As you're cutting your strips, you'll encounter uh, solder joints that the manufacturer has made in order to splice together shorter lengths. The solder joints may give some trouble, and the easiest solution is to just set aside any piece with a solder joint, but that may not be necessary. It all depends on how accurately uh, the manufacturer soldered the pieces together. Our lead panel depends on the lead strip pieces to be more or less the same length. There's not a lot of uh, variance that you can have and if the solder joint uh, added by the manufacturer reduces the overall length of the strip by too much then the contact points at each end may not line up properly for the pads on the flaps. Well you can eyeball any length of strip you're contemplating first to determine whether or not you can include a strip that has a solder joint before you cut. Feeding the strips in the channels should be quite painless. You can just drag it through using the thumb of one hand at the front of the strip and then the fingers of your other hand to ensure that the rest of the strip length is getting properly inserted under the edges of the channel chamfer. Once all your strips are inserted, you just have to fold over the flaps uh, and push on a cap. You want to take a little bit of care to make sure that the uh, you want to make a look to make sure that the uh, flap is flush and that you're getting the appropriate overhang uh, to the flap in front of it. But as long as this is, as long as the hinge is flush, 
he shouldn't have any trouble. Now looking at the cap from its uh, open end, you'll see that one edge is thicker than the other and that the thick edge has some indentations. When you slide on the cap, you want to make sure that the thick edge with the indentations is on the strip side of the panel like that. Once all the caps are attached, you can take your power connector and slide it into the three slots at the corner of your panel. Then while holding the power connector and panel firmly so that the power connector is flush with the panel, use some pliers or other blunt instrument to bend the pins so that the power connector is held in place. Once that's done, it's time to test your panel. Just put the correct voltage and connector and plug it into the panel. If your assembly went well, you'll find yourself with your own custom 3D printed solderless lead panel. Now, if you're happy with your panel the way it is, then it's a good idea to lock everything in place with a bit of glue or epoxy. Just turn your board over and attach a smidgen of adhesive on the edge of each cap to hold it in place, and then put a larger dollop of the stuff over the bottom of the power connector, and that'll keep it from wiggling around and, and losing connection. We explained the assembly method using a very small panel to clearly demonstrate the steps involved, but we present here a time-lapse presentation of the construction of the largest panel in this offering so you can appreciate how quickly and easily making your own 3D printed lead panel can be. We printed our panels in PLA with two perimeters, two bottom layers, three top layers, 20% infill, and a Z or Z resolution of 0.2 millimeters. We're using a fairly standard lead strip, but if you intend to use higher power leads, the heat they generate may be problematic and you may want to consider PETG or ABS or even polycarbonate as filament alternatives in order to address any thermal concerns you may have. We've provided STL files for over 50 configurations which we hope should satisfy most of your panel needs. Check out the description for a link to download the STL files for this project below. And as I've said before, if there's a configuration that you require and you're one of our financial supporters, you know how to get a hold of us and uh, get yourself hooked up with the file you need. So thanks for watching and we hope you'll find our 3D printed solderless lead panels a valuable resource for your project needs. We'll be using these panels in a number of upcoming projects, so if you'd like to see how versatile they can be, and if you'd like to just keep informed on what's going on at Printable Science, you know what you need to do. And as always, you're invited to visit our website at printablescience.com, where all the science that fits, we print.